Hi, I'm George Pearson, and I'll be showing you how to make a Photoshop Elements icon and also how to work with icon clip art. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe. When you subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications of my new videos. And if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Making icon images inside of Photoshop Elements is actually very easy and a lot of fun, but you may not need to do that. There's a lot of clip art available as well. We'll be making this file here in just a little bit, but here's an example of clip art. Let me show you where I found this. There it is. The site is pixabay.com. Simply do a search for icons and then set this at illustrations right there. There we are. There's a lot of great stuff in here. Just scroll down, a bunch of nice icons over there. There's some good icons in here and down here. So lots of things to choose from. The one I grabbed was this one right over there. So it's a great source to find a lot of artwork. I do most of my artwork searching here on Pixabay, and this is also a great place to find icon files. When you're working with this, hopefully it comes in as a PNG and has transparency in the background. That makes it real easy. If it has a solid color in the background, you may have to delete that color. It depends upon what your needs are for the icon file. You will, though, need to separate each one of these out into its own file. I'll do one up here just to show you how this is done. Let's just zoom in on the YouTube up there at the top. And I'll start off by just grabbing some guidelines here. I'll pull one in over here towards the right-hand side, just a little bit past the right-hand side. And I'll pull one down just a little bit past the bottom down there. And then just grab the rectangular marquee tool here. And let's pull that in. Now this should snap right to those guidelines. Like that, there it is. If it doesn't snap, double check your view settings up here and snap to, make sure that snap to guides is checked. And the guides are shown right there. If you don't have your rulers, just make sure that rulers is checked right there as well. Okay, now all you need to do is just to copy it out to a new file. I'll just do the, the basic way here. Let's go up here to edit, and I'll do a copy. And when you do it that way, it's going to place this image on the clipboard. And then if you go up here to File, New, and Blank File, there it is, File, New, Blank File, it's going to show you clipboard as your first document type. And it sets the size here to match the size that you just copied. Makes it real easy. Just open that up and then edit paste and there you go there's your icon image in its own file ready to use now this has the image up here and a white background if you want the transparency just hide the white background and there it is so it's real easy to work with these image files these icon image files just come in here and grab out the one you want to use copy it up to its own file and you're all set to go Let's take a look now at making our own icon files in here. Let me just get rid of this. There we go. Like I have right over here. I'll close that one. Let's get this out of the way. And we'll start off. Now I need to decide what size you want to have your icon file at. I'll make one here at 1 inch by 1 inch. This was real easy to do. You can make them any size you want, but this is just a good standard. It depends upon, of course, what your needs are on that. So go to File, New, Blank File. I'll set this at inches, and then I'll set this at one inch by one inch. I'll leave the resolution at 300, although you're probably going to be using this on the web, but do a save as, and then reduce the resolution at that point. Okay, choose OK. There's our basic file right here. I'll just dock that up there. Docking is just fine on this, and I'll zoom in just a little bit. Now, I want to have a nice circle in here, nicely centered circle. So we have our rulers up here. We already have snap to set. We already checked that up there with our snap to. Make sure that document balance is checked as well. That should be, that's almost always checked. You can then grab from your ruler and pull straight down. This is going to snap to the center. There it is. And the same thing for the vertical. Pull towards the center. It'll snap onto that center point. There it is. So there's our center point. Let's now grab the shape tool over here and I have mine set for an ellipse 
and then in here set this for a circle and down here make sure you check from center now I'll just choose just kind of a standard purplish color here a magenta color like that and come into the center right here just take this little cursor and put it right over those guidelines and then pull out from that point out towards the edge there we are we'll be changing this but this just gives us a basic circle to work with you just invert my colors over here white in front let's now put an image on top of this so I'll go over here to graphics and inside graphics I have mine set up by type and then shapes there's a lot of great things in here that can be used as icon files or icons I'll just scroll down and grab that cat that I used. and that's right there click on that and you should see the cat in there now it's kind of hard to see right now it's also coming in on this same kind of magenta color let's go back here to our layers you see this right there I'm going to hide that circle so there's the cat you can see it right there we can make that cat visible just by changing it to white I have my foreground color as white grab the paint bucket click inside the cat it's now white let's now bring our circle back up again and there's that cat you can now grab a corner and stretch the cat shape out until it's the right size for your icon and I'll position it right about there okay we no longer actually need to have those guides I'm just going to hide those so go up to view and uncheck guides they're now out of the way if I hide the background there's the basic icon file we can go fancier than this though by putting a gradient in here and to do that I'll put a new layer above this layer there it is come down to this layer hold the control key down click on the circle icon and that selects that circle right there we're still on this new layer above now let's go back over to the color picker here and change our foreground color now when you bring the color picker up like this you'll see that if you roll over the image I have an eyedropper right there I can use that click into this color here that gives me that same color that I have here and I can then use that as the basis for my light color so I'll also find something kind of on the real light side up here there it is choose okay so I have a, a light pink and a darker magenta right now let's now go up to this tool here this is your gradient tool and we can come in here and just make a gradient I'll go from the top just above the circle hold the shift key down pull straight down that gives you a perfectly vertical gradient and you get something kind of like that just kind of a nice soft gradient now there are two ways to do a sharper gradient one is to come in further hold the shift key down and then pull a shorter gradient like that and you get a tighter gradient it's kind of a little hard to find exactly the right spot sometimes this way you kind of have to play around with that or the other way let me put the first gradient back in again other way easier to control is to go down to the gradient in the tools down here click on edit this brings up the gradient editor right here in here you can adjust how fast the gradient works right there I'm going to set this one at a location of 40 this is in here from the left side which is 0 and the right side which is 100 so I set the right side click on this little stop right there look for that black triangle that means you're on that stop I'll set this one at 60 so now I have a real short gradient in there real short shift on that gradient so you're going to change your stop position just click on the stop make sure you see that black triangle and then change your number over here or you can just pull it back and forth but this is more exact just keep in mind that we're zero at this end 100 at that end okay choose okay and the exact same thing I'll come just above the circle hold the shift key down and pull down to just below the circle but this time a much tighter gradient in there because we just set that up down there with the gradient editor okay we can now deselect and let's put just a little thin beveled edge on this for more interest and we'll do that with the styles click on the styles button right there the top option is bevels and right down here we have a simple inner it's kind of a soft edge you can use a soft edge or come down here maybe simple sharp which is a harder edge I'll use the sharp one now this is too big looks like a button more than an icon so make this real thin and you do that by going up here to layers come down to layer style style settings there's the bevel you can control that right here just make this real real small just about like that maybe about two or three 
maybe two, just a little thin bevel around that edge, just a little bit of a three-dimensionality to it, and choose OK. All right, let's go ahead now and bring the size down more to an icon size and see what this looks like. And there we go. There's our custom icon made here very quickly and easily inside of Photoshop Elements. Now you don't have to use these graphics over here. You can use any graphic image you want, but having more space inside, more of a solid inside, tends to work better for icons because they tend to be very, very small. If there's too much detail like this piece of cake over here, you may not see all that detail at a real small size. So using a, a more blocky image like the butterflies up here or these things usually works out better than the more detailed images. But of course, you just try it and see how it looks. You may like that particular look. It's up to you, really. That's the ultimate goal here is to find an icon that you happen to like the look of. But there are lots and lots of options in here for this. You can also find free clip art online for a lot more as well. But there you go. That's how you can make a custom icon here inside of Photoshop Elements. If you had fun with this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and share with your friends. Also subscribe if you haven't already done so. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.